think all schools have a good academic program, but um, the one that I liked the most, number, my number one was SECO because of its, um, its atmosphere, the, the people interactions that I've had. I've, I think I've seen SECO a lot more than the other schools, um, but, and the eye care center here, it's, it's top notch. Um, compared to what I've seen at the other schools, so that's what I'm here for. Well, the, you apply to all great schools. <clears throat> they all have their strengths, and we have our strengths, but all of us have our weaknesses as well. So let's just say you've gotten to all of them. Okay. What are you looking for in an education? Education, um, definitely to know the books of things. I, I want to make sure that I know how to prescribe things, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and also making sure that I know how to treat a patient not only with the books that I've learned but also the procedures and when I spoke to some of the students um, on on Facebook as well we, there's a SCCO group and um, on student doctor network or with the students that are already here they said that they learned a lot of clinical aspects that um, that help guide you to like more and more and more so it's not all at once but you learn the basics first, and then you know you just keep going. And I think that's a great process. The the most important thing is to find a school that fits what your needs are. Is there anything other than just the educational aspects that you liked about CCO? Of course, the weather is <laughs> nice here. I've been in SoCal for uh, a pretty long time, okay. but definitely the people <clears throat> aspect. Uh, when I went on campus, we didn't meet just students who are from here, but the faculty. Um, the professors and the admin building they're they're all really genuinely nice you know because I've been to some places where sometimes when you call they're not even there or they don't get back to you till like a week later and, and I think that's very SEC is very attentive to your needs and they make sure that you know you it seems like they want you to succeed so it's not just about money it's not just about getting numbers or anything okay. so it seems a lot more personal to me yeah. in your research of yeah. SCCO, did you find anything that was a little surprising or the best kept secret that you're like, oh, I didn't know about this? Um, I remember reading something about SCO being unparalleled in their clinical aspects, and that that blew me away, and that's what caught my eye. I was like, I want to be a great clinician, you know, and I don't want to just know the books about things, and um, and I heard that the curriculum here. It, it changes often, and so because it, it's a private school, so this is a private school, and so I know that it kind of changes toward, you know, certain needs of the students. I think is that right? That's what I was just told. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the curriculum committee is constantly updating the committee, the curriculum to include new topics and to look at the balance of topics, and also uh, recently looking at how to best prepare students for board exams. Um, it, it's always under review and there are students on those committees too so they provide a lot of input about how the courses are working. So have you had a chance to look at our curriculum? Uh, I have online okay. and also when I spoke to my friend who goes here. Good, I think you know it's relatively demanding so I'm just curious how you translate your successful undergraduate career into a program like ours. Um, I know that it's similar to a quarter system and at UCSD we had quarter systems so we had a lot of different classes with tests, midterms, quizzes, and labs. So I know that after studying a lot and figuring out like how I study, but refiguring out how I study, um, I was able to not, not only get by but kind of understand the, the material a little bit better. At the beginning it wasn't, but then you know as you learn um, how to how to cope with it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I that's that's how I think that I can um, excel here at SCCO since I've kind of struggled with it at UCSD and kind of found my niche of how to study, and so I can kind of take that here at SCCO. And, um, well, describe some of the, your study habits or study skills. Um, uh, after after a, a lecture, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I record it because I can't capture all of the, the lectures in time, so I might re-listen to it or kind of just look at my notes a little bit. Um, and then w we, have con we have a lot of quizzes, so that's how it keeps us on track. So okay. study a little bit of the material here, study a little bit here, and then eventually for the midterm, you've kind of already known you know, what it's going to be about. So just to re refresh your memory. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. 
Um, now, Jacqueline, I noticed you went to India with Unite for Side. I'm wondering what got you interested in that, and can you tell us a bit about that voyage and what sort of challenges you faced and um, how you overcame them? Uh, that, that's a funny story. In the beginning, I didn't think about going to India to volunteer. I wanted to mm. actually study abroad in mm. Australia. Yeah. So it was either either or Australia or, or, or help volunteer. And I think the, the deadline kind of passed for studying abroad. Mm. And so I tried mm. to look at the other options. I was like, oh, I think this would be a great opportunity. As, yeah. At UCSU, we don't have um, we, a Unite for Sight. So I mm. kind of looked on their websites to see what kind of mm. programs I, I have, I can use, yeah. and um, after looking at it, I was like, oh, this is definitely doable, and I'd love to go to India, see mm -hmm. how their optometric system mm -hmm. works, mm -hmm. and so that's how I got started, and when I was there, it's a crazy experience, because <laughs> I've never been outside of the country, and so this is the first time. Wow. Yeah. And were you in a city, a rural area? Rural or? areas. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did get picked up at the airport and went to stay with the optometrists and ophthalmologists there, mm -hmm. but other than that one house, that one home, we, we just went to all these other different rural areas or there, I think there was a Red Cross Center and yeah. yeah. But every time we went somewhere, it was, it was about like 30 minutes to an hour drive. Mm -hmm. so. What sort of uh, eye care conditions are a problem in those areas that you visited? Um, I know that there was a lot, a lot of um, ocular diseases that they had. They had, there was a lot of cataracts, I think, that, that happens, and they did some surgeries for that. And I was able to see, I think, a couple of them. Um, in terms of other conditions, uh, I forget what they're called. I wrote them in a book, though. But I, yeah. yeah. Did you have to learn some new languages? I did. I learned Hindi, and I learned kind of like the basics. It was very hard because you're asking, you know, what are some of your problems? Mm -hmm. And eventually I was able to learn um, and pick out what they're saying by saying like watery yes. eye or something or how to, we did VAs and I had to say cover your right eye, cover your left eye and had to learn the alphabet. We had a, li a little okay. cheat sheet but eventually um, I, I knew what they were saying. So, so it was rewarding for you? It was very rewarding. It was very, very tough because our morning started from I think 7 a.m. all the way to 10 p.m. Yeah. Dinner started really late, so it was at 10 p.m. So. Do you know about some of the programs here that does things like that as well? Um, yeah, I think I've I've heard about like S. Bosch. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you can go out of the country as well. So I know a little bit about it. Okay. Yeah. You've done some other things as well. You visit a lot of practices mm -hmm. and things like that. What what other things have you picked up in some of your other experiences? Um, that every practice is very different, um, but so I learned in one how to fit contact lenses, and another how to be patient with um, with someone who has some type of uh, ocular disease or an or an eye problem, and that sometimes you don't always get the results you want in the beginning, but you, you know you got to keep working at it. Something might not be right. But the doctor would say, oh, "Okay, let's take a step back and think about this." So it's a lot of problem solving that I've seen in in them, and how they run the patient flow is a little bit different. Okay. Yeah, but I can choose and pick to see which one I like <laughs> for my future practice. Well, good. good. Because being an optometrist is more than just a job; it's more than just a career. As part of it is being part of a profession, actually. Mm -hmm. So when you hear that word, what does the word professionalism or the word profession mean to you? Um, it means making sure that what you do, you're doing it with um, dignity, you're doing it with uh, following ethical um, procedures. You, you have to think that everything is not always clear cut, but you have to make sure that it's the right thing and um, making sure that your patients come first, I think. That's important. Yeah. In the practices, did you? Uh, find any situations where you think, as an optometrist, I will have to have um, good ethical um, viewpoint um, that to address certain situations. Yeah, I think that probably happens often. Mm -hmm. um, I think I see it a lot in the front desk when uh, when the patients talk to the people working there, saying, "Oh, you know, I might need another pair of contact lenses," or um, 
I might not have the insurance, can I pay this later? Something like that. I think I've seen a lot of little things like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing too big. Mm -hmm. Or that I don't okay. know yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jacqueline, you've also played badminton. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. um, I started playing badminton in high school. It was just part of a, a PE thing, and I thought it was really fun. Um, so I started playing it, and then one of the coaches said, if you can beat me, then, you know, we'll make cookies for, for the class or something. And so I was like, okay, this is motivational for me. I love cookies. And so I, I started playing, and then we actually beat him. And so from there, um, you know, I, I played on the, the high school team for the four years, and then I started playing it for, um, in UCSD, too, um, on the club team. So it, it took a lot of practice, I think, um, because I wasn't good in the beginning. But then after doing it several, several times, many, many times, I started getting better and mm -hmm. won some, yeah. some things, some medals. Did you have to put a lot of training time in? Yeah.